Science Experiments with Mr. Brandon. Hi, Miss Sarah, and hi, everybody. Normally, as a scientist, I'm doing science experiments in a lab somewhere away from my home. But now that I'm at home, I'm wondering, how can I do science experiments with the things that I have lying around my house? Well, recently, Miss Sarah read me the story of Moses parting the Red Sea in the Bible. And as a scientist, I'm always asking questions like, how did Moses part the Red Sea? How did the water going from being in one place to separating so the Israelites could walk through it? So I came up with a few hypotheses that I want to test in my at-home lab today. And some of you can try these same experiments in your house with the stuff lying around your kitchen. So the first hypothesis I have of how Moses did it was using static electricity. So Miss Sarah, come on over and we'll do the first experiment. So the materials you'll need for this first experiment is a comb. You can see if you or your mom or your dad has a comb lying around somewhere in your house. You'll need a sink with running water. And the last thing you'll need is your own hair. So it can be nice, pretty hair like you're going out for a play date, or you can have messy hair since you're staying at home and nobody else will see. It doesn't matter what kind of hair you have, any hair will do. So the first step of the experiment is to turn on the water faucet. So you can turn on the water so that the water starts coming out. And one of the things you can play with in the experiment is how fast the water is coming out. So it can come out really fast or really slow. So we're going to try something that's pretty slow. Okay, now we have our water running. Now step two of the experiment is to take your comb and rub it through your hair several times. Just like this, like you're combing your hair, trying to make it look pretty. Okay, so now that we've rubbed our comb through our hair, we're gonna watch very carefully as we bring the comb close to the water. Ready? Let's try one more time. Let's get that hair really good and bring it up close to the water. You see the water jiggle as I brought the comb up close to it? Sometimes it's hard to see on that little camera, so you'll have to try it for yourself at home. We'll try one more time. See how the water bends a little bit towards the comb? What's happening here is something called static electricity. So your hair has a bunch of things called electrons in it, and when you rub the comb through your hair, those electrons go from your hair onto the comb. And when you bring the comb close to the water, the electrons interact with the water, causing it to bend. So, I was thinking as I did this experiment, what if Moses took his big staff, because he had a big staff in the Bible, he took that staff and he rubbed his hair really fast, and then maybe he stuck that in the water, and the static electricity caused the water to push apart. I don't know if that's a good hypothesis, though. What do you think, Miss Sarah? Do you think Moses did that? No. Okay, yeah, it's probably a lot of water to move with just one little staff. So let's try another experiment. Maybe he broke the surface tension of the water to cause it to move apart. So we're going to do a couple experiments related to what's called surface tension of water. So the first thing we're going to do uh, to show the surface tension of water is to gather our materials. So some things you'll need, a little bowl with just a little bit of water in it, doesn't really matter how much. You get a little bit of water in a bowl. You can have a couple pennies lying around. And then we're gonna need something to transfer the water from the bowl on top of the penny. So we luckily have this syringe lying around at our house that's gonna help us pull the water out of the bowl and onto the penny. So for this experiment, it's very simple. You're gonna see how many drops of water you can fit on top of the penny before the water spreads out. So I'm gonna draw up some water with the syringe. So now I have water in my syringe and I'm gonna slowly drip it on top of the penny and you can count with me and see how many water droplets we can fit on the penny. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, you see, I'm gonna pause real quick, how the water is bubbling up on top of the penny. It's forming like a little circle on top and it's not just going off of the sides. That's because of what we call the surface tension of water. So that just means that water molecules love to stick together. 
So because they stick together, they ball up on top of that penny rather than flowing off of the sides. So how many were we at, Miss Sarah? 10, 11? Okay, I think 10. So let's keep going and see how many. 11, 12, 13, 14, wow. 15, 16, 17, oh, it's just hanging over. 18, 19, oh, and finally the water couldn't hold itself together anymore and it ran off the sides. So I think I got 18 drops and then on the 19th it spilled out. See if you can beat that record. Now if you don't have a syringe lying around at home, maybe you can just find something like a straw and figure out how to draw water up under the straw and drip it onto the penny that way. You might have to get creative with things in your house to transfer the water, but see how many drops it takes you before the water spreads out on the penny. Now remember, the key concept here was the surface tension of the water, which was holding it all together. So for our last experiment, which you can try at home, we're gonna break the surface tension of the water, and we'll think about maybe Moses did a similar thing to part the Red Sea. So these are the materials you'll need for this last experiment. You'll need a Q-tip, and if you don't have a Q-tip, you can use a toothpick or even your own finger. You'll need pepper, which hopefully you can find in your kitchen. You'll need a bowl, and we'll again fill that with a little bit of water, so it doesn't matter how much, you can play around with the amount of water. So we have a bowl with some water in it, and we have some house soap. So you might have different kinds of soap lying around your house, and you can try different kinds to see if that affects the experiment. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pepper and sprinkle it on top of the water. Now, as you can see, as I put the pepper down, most of the peppers are floating right on top of the water. That's because the pepper is very light and it doesn't really like water. So we're filling up with pepper. You can play with how much pepper you use. I think I've done maybe 10 sprinkles. Okay, we'll call that good. Next, this is the fun part of the experiment. See how the peppers are just kind of randomly floating in the bowl? Now we're gonna see what happens when we break the surface tension of water using soap molecules, which don't like water. So we put some soap on the tip of our Q-tip here. So you see I'm using very little amount of soap. You don't need much for this experiment. So we have some soap on the Q-tip. We're gonna dip it into the bowl with pepper. What do you think is going to happen? Make a hypothesis of what you think might happen. Is the pepper going to fly out of the bowl? Let's see. So we're slowly going to bring the q-tip into the water and let's see what happens. Whoa! The pepper flew to the sides of the bowl. So what happened was the soap molecules broke the water from sticking together. So the water spread out really fast and the pepper went with it, which is what you saw happen in the bowl. So, Miss Sarah, do you think maybe Moses put some soap on the end of his staff so when he stuck it in the water, the water all separated? No. Uh, probably not. There's too much water and his staff probably wasn't big enough. Hmm. Well, this seems like it's going to be a hard question to answer. I'm going to see if I can come up with more experiments to help explain what happened. But in the meantime, as a Christian and as a scientist, I know that even though I can't explain how Moses did it, I can believe that God did it through Moses because God tells us that happened in the Bible and the Bible is trustworthy. So thank you for participating with these science experiments today and you can try these same things at home and see if you get a similar result. I'll see you later.